final thing that I'm going to bring up is um, animal sacrifice. Why would, why would God want animal sacrifice? That seems kind of cruel and weird and, and gross. Um, firstly, I want to say, yeah, it does. It does seem that way to us. But one consideration that we have to make is that we love to say that we love animals. We love to say, you know, like, oh, I love animals. Um, and some, some of us are even vegan or vegetarian. And that's, that's great. Um, that's cool. But, but the thing we have to realize is that when you are starving and there is an animal and you're going to die of starvation, you're probably going to kill that animal and eat it. And here's the thing. That would seem grotesque to us, but most humans in most of human history, that's what they normally did. They would raise animals, kill them and eat them. And so just the whole killing an animal part, that may seem weird to us, but that's because we're not butchers. That's because we're so far removed from our food supply that it's just something that we don't interact with. But when you really think about it, if you go to get a burger, you go, you go to get a steak, you're eating an animal and that animal had to die. So this whole idea about it being killed, it might be sad, but it's a necessity of life if you want to survive. Um, yeah, so th that's just one thing to realize that to kill animals in order to have meat. Um, and then the, the other thing is that when, when people had animals throughout history, it, it's because they raised them and they, they cared for them and then they made them big so they could eat them. My point is animals were investment and for God to ask an animal as a sacrifice, it would be a step of faith for someone because that's your, that's, your, that's your firstly financial security, but also your food. And when you go and give it to God, not for, your, not for yourself, you're gonna, have, um, you're gonna have to take a step of faith. It kind of be like maybe someone asking you to tithe a lot of money because you know money was tied up in land and, and wealth was measured in livestock um, back in the ancient Near East. So killing, it may, be, it may seem weird to us, but there's tons of people even now they'll raise animals, they'll kill them. And we'd be kind of hypocrites to say, no, killing animals is bad when, when we're not vegans or vegetarians. And then to those who are vegans and vegetarians, uh, that's awesome. That's cool. When push comes to shove and, and you're starving, a lot of times that doesn't last that long. Um, and then the other thing to realize is that God was foreshadowing Jesus with the whole animal sacrifice things. At the sacrifices that were presented, they were supposed to be the best, the first, and without blemish. Um, but we see that they weren't sufficient anyway. And then one other thing is that people will say, isn't this cruel because animals are innocent? And that's kind of the point. When God had people kill animals, he wanted them to be the first, the best, and without blemish. It was a symbol of purity, of innocence, and that's because us as humans, we're not innocent in the way animals are. We, we lie and cheat and kill and steal and we sin. And so when we need an offering because we've done wrong, we can't have someone who lies and cheats and kills and steals. We need someone that's innocent and pure and holy, like an animal. But the Bible recognizes this, and this is what I want to leave you with. They were still not sufficient. Animals were not sufficient. Only Christ could truly make a payment once and for all as a sacrifice for our sins that would atone for us, that would take our sins from us. As this is the passage I want to close with. It's from Hebrews chapter 9, verses 13 to 15 and 24 to 26. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, Purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Therefore, he is a mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the, the promised eternal inheritance, since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. For Christ has entered, not into holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly, as the high priest enters the holy places every year with blood not his own. For then he would have to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin 
by, sa- by the sacrifice of himself. The bottom line is it is finished through Christ's work. He was the ultimate sacrifice for our sins.